Hey guys, it's Kelly. Today I want to do another video in my deep dive series and I want to talk all about photo retouching. There's always been something a little bit weird about beauty advertisements using completely photoshopped images that do not represent the product and the way that it looks on real skin. But I've noticed a small, a small handful of brands and retailers that are vowing to stop promoting their products using retouched photos and instead use raw images that accurately represent the way people look in real life in these products. And I'm so excited to see it. So in today's video, I wanna walk you guys through some of those brands and retailers that are making the change and also discuss a little bit about my thoughts on Photoshop and retouching images and unrealistic beauty standards. So if you are new here, I've been having so much fun with this deep dive series, talking about a lot of beauty industry topics. I recently talked about brands that left Sephora and Ulta, the downfall of Kylie Cosmetics. So if you're into this style of content, be sure to subscribe and I'll leave my full deep dive playlist linked down below. But let's go ahead and hop into it. So photoshopping is nothing new. This has been around for decades and I feel like the peak of this was probably the early 2000s. That is when we saw so many advertisements that were completely unrealistic. I mean, don't get me wrong, even today we see unrealistic advertisements, but early 2000s truly was like the peak of the airbrushed to nothing skin, like complete plastic porcelain doll skin. And while prepping for this video, I actually found an advertisement from 2011 with Lancome that was banned in the UK for being too unrealistic. I'm gonna scoot over so I can pop the photo up. Actually, I'll pop it up big screen so you can see everything. I'll pop it right over my face. This was with Lancome and Julia Roberts. And what is really sad to me is that the photo Side, side by side to this one of Julia Roberts is already stunning. Like she is perfection on her own without needing to go in and Photoshop her pores to nothing. Like to be honest, even just her regular face almost perpetuates unrealistic beauty standards. So to then take it to this next level is so toxic to especially young consumers viewing that and not necessarily recognizing how unrealistic it is. And what I've noticed these days is that Brands are still photoshopping, but they're making it look like maybe they're not. So the photo I just shared with you guys, yeah, that one you can look at and you can see, holy crap, they have photoshopped this to be a completely different person basically. But what we're seeing these days are advertisements that are still being photoshopped. They're still removing imperfections. They're still removing fine lines. They're still removing discoloration freckles, but they're photoshopping it in a way that you can't tell. So they'll still leave in some texture or they'll add back some pores so that the average consumer might look at it and say, oh, this is an unretouched photo. But unless the caption says this photo is unretouched, I would assume that it's usually not. They have usually altered a lot of the photo to make it appear as though this person has not been photoshopped when in reality they probably have. And one social media app that I'm surprised, I'm complimenting on this, I'm very surprised, is Instagram. We could go, I could go off on a whole tangent on my thoughts on Instagram and unrealistic beauty standards. Like that could be a whole separate video but one thing i will commend instagram for is that with their story filters if you post on your instagram story and you use one of their thousands of filters that change your face change the lighting it will say at the top that there's a filter i don't know that they necessarily do this to let you know that this is unrealistic i think they more so do it because those filters were created by users However, either way, I still appreciate it and I'd like to see that more. So let's talk about the brands and retailers that are doing that. The one that inspired this video, CVS. So I mentioned this in a recent video where I talked about beauty industry trends that I want to stop and ones I want to see more of. And I put CVS in the category of I want to see more and I talked about their new Beauty Unaltered campaign. So this is a newer campaign. Honestly, with most of these, they're pretty new. But CVS has vowed to post unretouched photos in this Beauty Unaltered campaign. 
And the reason I wanted to talk about CVS first is because they are really leading this change because they're asking a lot of their partners that are sold in stores to start following suit. And that was actually how I discovered that they were even doing this because I follow Flower Beauty and they were posting uh, in connection with this Beauty Unaltered campaign. And Flower Beauty was then posting photos that were unaltered. And they're even carrying this out into their stores, not just on their social media. That's the direction CVS is going and it makes me so happy. Can you imagine if Ulta and Sephora did that as well? Just in the little tiny thing in the bottom corner, this photo has been altered. This photo is digitally retouched. Like such a small thing could have a massive effect in the beauty community and especially on those younger beauty consumers that are being fed unrealistic beauty standards to even just open their eyes that, oh, even though I can see pores in this photo and it looks like it's not altered, the watermark in the corner suggests that it actually is. Another one is Olay. Now I do wanna mention, I typically only discuss cruelty-free brands on my channel, but we will be talking about some non-cruelty-free brands in this video, but I still think this impact is so important that I wanna discuss it. So the change from Olay is pretty new, only about a year, and they have announced that they will no longer retouch models' complexions in skincare ads. Which, side note, I did wanna note, all of the brands on my list have explicitly stated that they're either gonna stop doing it or they're going to write on the photo whether it's been retouched or not because going back to what I said at the beginning, sometimes we can look at advertisements and campaigns and think, oh, this isn't retouched, but it usually is. So these brands have explicitly stated that they are not gonna do that anymore which is so refreshing to see compared to the Olay ads I remember viewing as a child, uh, even just like, 10, 20 years ago, the ads I would see from Olay, again, just no pores, completely non-existent. And one thing I wanna note throughout all of this is that in addition to actually Photoshopping images, a lot can be done from a very talented photographer with very advanced lighting. So even when we're seeing unretouched photos, they're still not always representative of what that might look like in real life. So I do want to also note that on top of all of this, but the next brand I want to talk about is Dove. So Dove is owned by the parent company Unilever and they have recently, very recently, vowed to eliminate all digital retouching and they're also removing the word normal from packaging, which I think is kind of cool. And this is due to a survey of 10,000 consumers that showed that more, of half, more than half of them felt left out when the word normal was used on product advertising and they experienced that word negatively. And Dove over on their Instagram is doing a huge no digital distortion campaign, which I think is really cool. And I will say with Dove and honestly all of these, we could debate whether they genuinely care about unrealistic beauty standards or they recognize that promoting this is a fantastic marketing approach for them. I would argue it's probably the latter, however, I think it has a positive impact either way, so I'm happy to see it, even if the intentions potentially are not genuine, I still think it's important to see the industry moving in this direction. There are also a lot of fashion brands doing this as well. We have Airy, Mod Cloth, and more, and I think it's important that we see this from both beauty campaigns with makeup and skincare and hair, but also fashion campaigns when you're showing someone's body Unrealistic beauty standards across the board are incredibly toxic. So to see more companies being transparent about the use of photo editing is really important. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still like a ways to go, but it's a step in the right direction. And with that, I just hope to see continued representation of different skin tones, of different body types, especially in the beauty space of different age groups. It is very, very rare to see mature women in beauty campaigns, extremely rare. Most beauty campaigns are shot with women in their 20s, and that's not representative of everyone that wears makeup. And we still have such a long way to go, especially with a lot of beauty brands, when you look at their social media and specifically their Instagram accounts, I've been taking note of the 
influencers that they repost and what that photography looks like. And again, it's normally extremely edited, extremely perfected. So it has been refreshing to start to see a little bit less retouching in the beauty space. And I hope that this small list of brands can eventually expand into a much larger list. And I love that CVS especially is encouraging their partners to do the same thing. And I just would love to see, this is me crossing my fingers, I would love to see Ulta and Sephora do that next. I'm so interested to hear your thoughts down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun for me looking into all of this. So thank you so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.